Jim from JetsonX.com. Today we are going to look at the Stereo Labs Z camera on the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 development kit. Let's get started. Stereo Labs recently announced support for the Jetson TX2 using their new Z SDK 2.0. Let's install the SDK and take a look. First, we go to the downloads page and we will download the SDK. Do we want to keep it? Yes. Let's open up a folder. Find our downloaded file. There it is. Let's make it executable. And let's run the installer. To continue, you have to accept the EULA. Accept? Yes, please. Install the samples? Of course! We want to play. User local Z sample. Use the Z calibration tool to update your camera calibration. Your calibration seems outdated. Okay. Okay, we're all installed. Let's go take a look. Switch over to user slash Local Z, there it is. Tools. So normally at this point you would run the Z calibration. I had a whole bunch of issues when I did this on a dry run this morning, so I'm not going to torture you and bring you through that process. I'll write about this in the article, the issues I had about installation and firmware upgrade, but I will leave that out of the video because you probably don't care. <laughs> and let's go over to the tools. Let's run Z Explorer. Ah, oh, there we are. Hello. So we can see that this is HD 720. It's at 60 frames per second. In real life, it looks better than it does on YouTube because I only record it at 30 frames per second. There are other modes. Here's VGA, this is VGA at 100. You can see it's a little bit fuzzy. This is 1080 at 30 frames per second. So you get a wider field of view. And I don't think it supports 2K yet. Oh yes, it does. And this is at 15 frames a second. So when you see it in real life, it looks a little bit stuttery. We'll switch down to HD 720. And we can see that we get the full frame rate of 60. Let's close this up and take a look at the depth viewer. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the Z calibration to be recognized by the depth viewer. So I'm switching over to an alternate installation that I had working this morning. We'll take a look at that. Let's open up the depth viewer. There we are. Okay. So down here on the bottom left, let's make this full screen here. On the bottom left, we have the depth map itself. We can choose depth or the confidence map. Yikes. Up here we have the view from the cameras. 
left, right. You can see both of them side by side. And over here on the right, we have a point cloud. One of the other things to notice here is that we're using the 720p version and we're getting 40 hertz out of it. And that includes the display of the point cloud. So if I walk around, And this is Penelope Aurora, Penelope Aurora, Penelope Aurora, ba, 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 ba. They call her Penny, but I think she's worth a whole lot more. Let's switch this to 1080. You notice that the aspect ratio changes a little bit here. and the FPS goes down to 22 Hertz. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. So that's one of the tools. Close that up. There's also another tool called ZFoo. Let's take a look at that one. Let's set our input to live. Okay, and let's start recording. I'm holding the camera. And what this does is makes a 3D mesh. And we'll stop it. It will do a little bit of processing here, take the mesh, try to make sense of it, and do some environment mapping, some texture maps. So here's the results. You can see. So you can see that it's a little bit confused. I think this tool is better used outdoors in much larger areas. It's not really tuned for a small room like this. Let's close this up. There are several samples included. One that's pretty interesting is positional tracking. The camera does visual positional tracking. It basically looks around at its environment and figures out what its position is. Let's open that up. I'll move the camera around. So you can tell that it knows its orientation and where it is in three space. I thought that was really interesting. And these are all sample code, so you can actually use this. Let's look at spatial mapping. Press the space bar. This is looking at the scene and trying to figure out a mesh for it. similar to what the ZFU was doing. 
Once you have a complete mesh, then of course you can texture map over it and have a 3D space. So you have the basic code building blocks to do that. Let's look at the depth sensing. This is basically the code in the depth viewer that we were looking at previously. So it does a pretty nice job. Let's talk about this a little bit. It's a major pain to get the calibration and the library firmware working in the environment that I have set up. I would assume that calibration becomes easier as time goes by. There were some issues installing the firmware updates from the Windows machines. One of the things that has helped is they redid their website. So there were actually some solutions for the issues that I was having previously. I wish that had been there a week ago, but oh well. It does look a lot better than it did a year or two ago when I looked at it last. So we've seen some improvements and certainly the performance is starting to improve in part because we're using faster computers with it now but the algorithms appear to be getting better and more interesting. Thanks for watching. Yeah.